Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Rave reviews for Robert Williams' political satire, Rainbow Farm. Hilarious, awesome, politically savvy, great insight, entertaining and educational. Laughed out loud at description to some of the characters. Super easy to read and so entertaining. And now the sequel, Rainbow Farm 2.0, Impeachment and Virus. Something for everybody in the sequel. Robert says he hopes the result of reading it will be an honest self-critique of ourselves and America and more acceptance of all things different. Robert is a retired Army officer with a B.A. in Anthropology from the University of Memphis and an M.A. in Russian Studies from Florida State University. The son of a school teacher encouraged to read at an early age. Over the years, British author George Orwell and the allegorical novella Animal Farm, still his favorite. Currently residing in Annandale, Virginia, it's Rainbow Farm 2.0 Impeachment and Virus. A lighthearted yet poignant commentary on the political climate in the U.S. since the 2016 presidential election. And other Robert Williams is back with us on This Week in America. Robert, welcome back to the program. Been looking forward to this. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again to talk about the sequel. Uh, glad to be here, Rick. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. And I can say this is the time of year that all turkeys and Rainbow Farm is no exception. Get a little nervous. <laughs> so, you know. Happy Turkey Day for tomorrow. Well, thank you. Same to you, and I appreciate it, especially close to the holiday, taking the time to do this. Let's talk about Rainbow 2.0. We had a chance to talk about Rainbow Farm a, a few months ago on the program. This book sort of what picks up the story. Give us a little bit of background, and then we'll talk about what inspired you to do the sequel and this great cover that you've got. Right. It just, you know, like I said, DC, it just seems to be the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. And so it's definitely no lack of material. So with all the turmoil and controversy and how everything just sort of lined up one on top of the other between a general election year and COVID, the virus, uh, the, you know, the impeachments, the investigations. So it's been a crazy three years. So I just wanted, you know, to c continue on with the story. And I had a lot of requests from friends that generally like the first one it said hey will there be a sequel so here we are well i read some of the reviews from the first one and everybody did enjoy that and i'm sure they're delighted to find there is a sequel it's rainbow farm 2.0 impeachment and virus by robert williams book available amazon google all the usual places we'll have information on our website thisweekinamerica.us talk about the cover i really enjoyed the uh, the color art that you've got here how did how did you put that together yeah, once again, you know, I use the same illustrator, and usually what will happen is uh, she'll do illustrations, and there's one that just sort of jumps out as, well, this should be the cover. And this one, I think, sort of captures, it has both the impeachment and uh, virus, as you can see. You yes. had the two presidential candidates. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Sort of up to you to determine who they are, but you have Pete the Peacock from the first. If you notice, he's got a you look in the background there, he's got a Corona cell on his shoulder <laughs> and he's wearing no mask. And you have the other candidate that is wearing a mask. So just sort of the show, the different approach that those two uh, candidates had towards, you know, their campaigning and all that plays out. And in the background, as always, you have Justice the Bull waiting for more fun and games. And you can see the Corona cells lurking behind the fence in the background. I think it's safe to say one of these two animals is going to exit stage left here pretty soon. And I yes. don't think it's the one with the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow Farm 2.0 impeachment and virus by Robert Williams outdid himself on the cover for this one. That sort of, when you look at it, summarizes the, uh, the storyline. Well, let's talk a little bit about this book specifically, Rainbow Farm 2.0. What's the book about? And, and if you can tell me, some, I know a lot of characters, tell me some of the main characters. Yeah, once again, you know, you have, it's, the book is political satire, so I'll try not to take it too serious, you know, some, some of the reviewers seem to have, but some recognize it for what it is, just an opportunity to laugh and laugh at ourselves. Yes, and we need So you got, you got the usual suspects coming back as main characters, you got Pete the Peacock, of course you got Woo the Owl, you have Sly the 
fox uh, from the Red Farm, which everyone knows is, I can say his name, Vladimir Putin. Uh, so it brought back a lot of the same characters, but there's a lot of new characters. There's an old bear and a snake who's a little hitman team that have been tasked to take out the peacock in an operation they call uh, Clock the Cock. And <laughs> the whole planning session that they go through and the rally that they attend and uh, how that thing plays out. So uh, it picks up where the last one left off. There was a very short chapter on the little four rabbits and this one starts with the same chapter on the little four rabbits, where you have in Persia leading the little classroom session, reading uh, Saul Alinsky rule for radicals. And one of the rabbits seems to be juggling some peaches, which symbolize impeachment. And she was the one of the Congress women, I should say, that on her election night said that we're going to impeach the blank. Mm. So Okay. Okay, I, I, I recall that in real life, and we'll see it again played out in, uh, in Robert's book, Rainbow Farm 2.0. This really is ripped from the headlines, just as in the, the, the first book, the initial Rainbow Farm, which, of course, is available wherever books are sold. Many references tied to real-world events. You mentioned a couple there. Talk about some others, because this really is, as you're reading it, every paragraph is filled, filled with something that uh, has a connection to the real world. Yeah, just I, again, like the last one, used the same construct, and I picked up with you know, there's political references, there's musical references, uh, you know, all kinds of there's some religious references, things that you'll see where the words have been changed up a little. If you remember in the last one, I had the Electoral College <laughs> represent the Electoral College. Yes. So, just as in Rainbow One, Rainbow. Two has these these references just littered throughout throughout the book. So one I will tell you where it's sort of interesting is it's the Hus Bus and Cuss in Sin City, which was a play on the uh, donkey slash Democrat primary debate. And in addition to you know applying animals to certain characters that I not just physical characteristics, but sort of what they make me think of, of how they behave sometimes yes. and act. Well, this you get sort of a, an extra layer. So at this debate, uh, of course, these characters are aligned to animals, but it's, since it's close to Halloween, I've chosen Halloween costumes that, that they show up and wearing to the debate to sort of indicate <laughs> some of their behavioral characteristics. And one example I would give is I said flying in on her broom is – Cackles the hyena as the wicked witch from the West. Now, your guess as to who that might be, uh, I leave that up to the reader. But, you know, sort of interesting that the cardinal direction West being left as you look at the map sort of lines up with liberalism and this yes. particular <laughs> candidate being from that side. So <laughs> that's just one. What's so great about that particular chapter? I give you 11 of them. So you have 11 characters where you can – See the character, see the Halloween costume and go, wow, that either fits or I don't know what he's thinking or wow, well, it does fit. So that's what I was with that as far as references. Well, the, And that's one of the fun parts of, of reading the book Rainbow Farm and now the sequel Rainbow Farm 2.0, trying to figure out uh, exactly who these people are. You do such an excellent job of portraying them in, uh, in a sense that makes it fun as a reader to try to figure out who the characters are. Do you have a favorite character? I sort of hate to ask because I'm sure you developed all these people, so there, there are probably a number of them. But is there a character that stands out that you really enjoyed portraying? Yeah, it's it's easy to fall in love with some of these characters. I mean, and that's yes. just not coming yes. from me. But it, that's something my illustrator, she told me as well. I mean, she really started, you know, she's the one that brought these things to life. And that's why I think her illustration is just so important. But if I was going to pick one of them, I would say it would be Sly the Fox. And that, of course, being uh, Vladimir Putin, President Putin from Russia. And uh, I just love the way he's always one step ahead and able to flip the script and turn whatever accusation or whatever question is on him and putting the, you know, the person doing the interview uh, on the defensive. And one example of that is this time it's in New York City. So she's much more confident last time she went to Moscow. So this time it's in New York City. She goes, I'm going to get, this is my chance. I got him on home turf. This is going to be payback. 
And the first thing he says was, well, as I was coming in, I saw the mother hen, which represents the Statue of Liberty. He says, I saw the mother hen with a fence around it and, you know, border guards. And he says, I thought, you know, you guys are supposed to be welcome, welcoming animals into Rainbow Farm, not keeping them out. So he has this uncanny ability, you know, just to sort of flip the script. There's another point where she says, why are you, her referring to Putin, says, why are you on Ukraine a farm, which is the Ukraine, knowing that <laughs> Russia took Crimea and took uh, uh, part of the Eastern Ukraine. And his comeback is, why are you where you are? And why are you where you have been? And where are you going next? So he took an accusation of being in like one specific place and it turned it on her saying, why is Rainbow Farm seem to be all over the planet? So I think he just, he exposes a lot of the hypocrisy of yes. our foreign policy yes. and it's just looking at it from a different foxhole. Uh, Robert Williams back with us on the program, this time talking about the sequel to Rainbow Farm. This is Rainbow Farm 2.0, Impeachment and Virus. Is there a, a, a takeaway? I mentioned in the beginning, yeah, the, the book is highly entertaining. You've done an excellent job. It's really, I can't imagine the talent required to put something like this together and to pull it off as well as you did. But uh, I'm sure there, I mentioned some hopes that you have. What's the takeaway besides the entertainment value? It, it does get you thinking, doesn't it? It, it does. And, uh, you know, to quote Aerosmith, one of my favorite songs is, same old stories, same old song and dance, my friend. I think the... American people and here represented by the animals on their farm are just sort of fed up with the same old bickering and partisan politics. And, you know, it just screams for can't, you know, can't Congress and can't the other branches of government just come together and do what's right for the animals slash uh, people. And there's, you know, just realizing that there's strength and diversity. It's, you know, different animals, live on different parts of the farm. Of course, they have different likes and dislikes. And yes. just because yes. you may be a pig from the pig pen doesn't mean you should look down on the alligator because all constituents are, are different. I think there's more strength in our diversity. And, and I think we have more in common, actually, than we have out of common. I give one example in the book, and here's where I took a real-life example from where I was sitting around with some friends at a, around a fire one night and we we're having a discussion. And for 55 minutes, we, everybody agreed. I mean, and there were, we didn't know, there was new people that showed up. So there was, you know, there were a couple of people there that I didn't know. So talked for 55 minutes and, you know, everything's great, TV, song, movies. And the last five minutes turned political and that's where the swords came out. And I left that conversation thinking, oh my gosh, how can you agree for 55 minutes and then let, five minutes of a difference uh, yes. dominate yes. the landscape. So those kind of lessons. You know, it's interesting, the two main themes, impeachment and virus. How did you go about depicting these? Again, references, uh, impeachment, uh, peaches. So <laughs> so in the, in, in the one photograph, like I said, where you have the young Congress rabbit, like, She's juggling these peaches and, you know, she's she's good, says she's going to impeach, you know, the president. And then that sort of goes right into the fun and games that I had before where you had to ride the bull. But this time the competitions are different. So you either uh, back to the impeachment. He gives like Shifty the weasel and Nads the walrus, which are two congressmen who were the ones who were leading. They were uh, houses. They were the representative House of Representatives speakers, like lead lieutenants on the impeachment campaign. But I tied that into a competition where they're each given arrows that represent potential articles for impeachment. And they have to shoot the bull with this arrow to see which one sticks, so which one of those are going to actually go forward and be for the impeachment. As far as uh, the virus, I shaved, saved most of that discussion for the latter chapter. Uh, the owl woo hoots, and he goes into into the virus, the origin, how it became a political football, you know, when it, how it should have united us, but seemed to have divided us. So several things along that line. So clever the way you work the 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 new material, and there's always new material. There's been new material every day for the last four years, so nothing short uh, short to work on, and and. 
incorporated in Rainbow Farm 2.0, impeachment and virus. You mentioned it before, the illustrations. Let's talk about that because you've got a remarkable way of presenting this. It, it's color illustrations. It jumps out off the page. It captures your attention, tells a story as well as the, as the text. Talk about the process of, of doing the illustrations for uh, Rainbow Farm 2.0. Yeah, just real quick, my favorite, you know, it's one of the questions was, well, which one do you like the most? And I like all of them, but there are some that, you know, some people are going to like more than others. But for me, it was sort of a toss up. One is of uh, Fancy the Bat, who again is the speaker. And when they come over and they arrive to deliver the articles of impeachment, you have the walrus and the weasel with these two peach baskets. And then you have believe the one that was saying she wanted to impeach and they all if you i don't know if you remember but during that ceremony there were pins that were passed out so there they are they had their pins one has a little phone so you know try to just make light and fun of how what was supposed to be a serious you know event turned into passing out ceremonial pins which oh by the way the taxpayers and rainbow farm animals pay for the other is the two photo spread a uh, two-page spread where she did for that, what I told you, the Huss, Fuss, and Cuss in Sin City, the debate, where she has all 11 of those characters in their Halloween costumes and a moderator out front, which is a toad frog, a guy named Chuck Toad. Your guess is good as mine as who that might be. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And as far as the process, I, it's just unbelievable how the rapport that I built with her from the first book to this book how I can just send her a passage and she can just come back with these beautiful illustrations. A lot of the times it may require a small edit just to make sure it doesn't contradict some text that later on that yes. she might not have seen. But I mean, usually within days, she's coming back with these just great illustrations. And it's rare sometimes to be able to find an illustrator like that, that thinks like the author. And in this case, she, she certainly does. Uh, Rainbow Farm 2.0, Impeachment and Virus, Robert Williams, time going by so quickly here. I'd, what did, did you learn anything from writing the sequel? Did this, what, did, what, what enlightened you as you were working on this? Yeah, I, I would say practice what you preach. I mean, I, you know, a lot, of, a lot of going after, you know, exposing flaws of human character. Well, we're all human and we all have flaws, so... Maybe being able to learn from some of the mistakes of others, you know, and of course the golden rule always jumps out there, treat others yes. as you would want to be treated. So that and not to take ourselves too serious. From the first book, I actually did a, receive a couple of emails that were very critical that said, you know, how can you make fun of the president like that? And I'm, you know, it's okay to laugh. And especially in 2020, I think we need a little laughter. We need to laugh. On top of all the other stuff. Yeah, you know, the the penultimate penultimate chapter is woo hoots. It's a fairly long chapter, mostly dialogue. So you put a lot of thought, obviously, into that part of the book. A uh, few minutes left in the program. Briefly describe what you were trying to accomplish with that interview and in, in the short final piece on the revolution, because this is this is really good stuff you've got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you know that to be honest, that's the one chapter that. People either loved it or some were sort of critical of it. They thought it was a little too long and too preachy. So this time around, I tried, I thought it was important enough, and there's some really good educational points in there about new things, such as convention of states and movements to get rid of the electoral college. Uh, but I tried to lighten it up this time where I had a call-in segment, and I used my own friends as certain characters. So they're in the book now. They're in print. <laughs> to uh, call in and ask questions of the owl yes. as to, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So, you too know, easy. By the way, we're doing a video of this, and if you go to uh, YouTube, you'll find it there. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Click on videos. You'll see the video there with Robert. You'll see the first one as well. A few weeks ago, we did uh, Rainbow Farm. Now we're doing Rainbow Farm 2.0. Uh, the way things are going out there, are we going to see another sequel, a Rainbow 3.0, anything you're, you're thinking about? You're just going to sit back and see what transpires here in the coming weeks. I guess you got to have a trilogy, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> so, good things coming, groups of three, I guess. Uh, yes, and I've already penned the first chapter. Oh, great. Quick, 
preview of what that is. Pete seems to notice that some of his canaries that he was using for his tweeter slash Twitter have come up messing. So it sort of represents the, you know, the role that big tech played in, and I'm not saying it's true or not, but as far as suppression of, of the message. So he's come in the office and, you know, his beloved little yellow canaries that he used to take the message to the people, all of a sudden they're, they come up messing. So that's how the first, that's the first chapter, and I've already written the first chapter of the next book. So Fantastic. And I hope we have a chance to uh, to talk about that. They say one is the loneliest number, but in books, two just sort of lays there, doesn't it? All of a sudden, you got to have a trilogy, and I'm glad that you've uh, got that yeah. and working on that. It's so much fun to have Robert with us on the program, Robert Williams author of Rainbow Farm 2.0, Impeachment and Virus. You'll find it at Amazon, all the usual places. We'll have information on our website as well. Rainbow Farm, the original, is there as well. It's a great reading. You'll enjoy it very much. So much thought and talent, uh, and from an illustrating standpoint, is well put into the, uh, the book, soon to be a trilogy. Robert, it is always a pleasure. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. I enjoyed it. Always fun, Robert Williams. The book is Rainbow, Rainbow Farm 2.0, Impeachment and Virus. Information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC, for information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.